Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this ordering of events video, I'll be discussing ordering of events using physical time and clock, ordering of events using logical time and clock, happen before relationship and causality. So let's get started. Let's have a look at ordering of events in our real life based on physical time and clock. The notion of time helps us to arrange our daily activities in an order and that is known as ordering of activities or events. Physical time is what most people think of as time. It is the duration an action or process takes to run and a physical clock records this duration. Let's look at my morning schedule of 5 events to understand ordering of events. I wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock using my clock so my day starts with time and clock. Then take a shower at 6.30, get ready and have breakfast at 7. Take a bike ride to work at 7.30 and start teaching at 8. All my events are ordered based on the physical time of my physical clock. In this ordering, one event happens before another event. For example, I wake up before taking a shower. This happen before relationship is determined by the physical time using physical clocks as a mechanism to deliver this time. So, in the real world, ordering of events is established using physical time and clock and we know the exact time of events. Let's make this example distributed. Assuming me and my friend both are doing the same activities at the same time at two different locations based on two different physical clocks. My events are ordered based on my physical clock and my friend's events are ordered based on his physical clock. Remember, all the clocks are reasonably precise, stable and accurate but they are not perfect. We can arrange our own events in total order and determine their happen before relationship based on our own clock in isolation. But we cannot order these events together with 100% accuracy because the two clocks are not fully synchronized. For example, we both wake up at 6 o'clock but based on the two different clocks and there may be a minute time difference between these clocks. Therefore, we cannot establish the correct order of two events. Let's look at another type of event that is message event. To understand this clock synchronization issue, I sent a message to my friend to meet me in the cafe after the lecture. Here, the received message event cannot happen before the sent message event even though the clocks show the same time. So one event is happening before another event that is happen before relationship. Despite both clocks showing the same time, we know for sure that there will be a small time gap between the two events. This applies to all other similar events between us. Therefore, we cannot determine the exact order of events unless both clocks are fully synchronized which means both clocks start at the same time and never drift apart which is very difficult to achieve. Consequently, it is difficult to use physical time and clock for ordering of events in a distributed environment. Now let's understand ordering of events in a distributed system and just assume one side of events are happening in one computer and other side of events in another computer of a distributed system. However, if we use physical clocks, then we will have the same clock synchronization issue on different computers and we cannot arrange all the events in a total order. Consequently, the concept of logical time and clock was introduced in distributed systems to resolve the issue of desynchronized physical clocks by replacing the notion of physical time with logical time. Logical time is the virtual time span and a logical clock records this time by simply assigning a timestamp or counter to each event. A logical clock allows global ordering of events in distributed systems. For establishing a coherent order of events across multiple nodes using logical time and clock, we need to classify events into two different categories local or internal events and external events or received messages. 
let's say we have got five local events on the node p and five local events on the node q in a logical clock a time stamp or counter is assigned to each event on each node therefore we can establish the order of local events based on their counters and determine one event happen before another event however establishing the relative order of events on two different nodes is still a difficult task so how can we establish a coherent order of events across multiple nodes let's look at an external event and it's happen before relationship so sent message event on the node p is a local event however received message event on the node q is an external event because it is caused by a non local event here we can establish that the sent message event happened before the received message event this is happened before relationship for an external event which establishes a partial ordering of events on different nodes now let's look at logical time and logical clock in a distributed system using the typical space time diagram or lamport's diagram of a distributed system in which several local and external events are illustrated on two different nodes p and q here a local event could be a local execution or sent message and an external event is a received message in this diagram most events are local events except p3 and q3 which are external events or received messages now we can use one logical clock on each node means a separate time stamp for the node p and a separate time stamp for the node q now the key question is how do we increment the counter for each new event so it depends on the type of logical clock we use for example lamport's clock or vector clock which are explained in my separate videos you can find the links in the description below let's summarize the logical time and logical clock logical time is the abstract division of the system into before and after intervals a logical clock is simply a counter or time stamp that is incremented based on events on a node or process the notion of logical clock was proposed by leslie lamport a logical clock records chronological and causal relationship among events by attaching a time stamp to each event a logical clock is used for ordering of events in a distributed system based on the happen before relationship we have been talking about happen before relationship in general which determines the partial ordering of events in distributed systems now let's look at some specific conditions for happen before relationship so an event a happens before b if one of the following conditions is true first condition an event a happens before b if and only if two events a and b are occurring on the same node or process and the time stamp of a is less than the time stamp of b for example two events p1 and p2 are occurring on the same node or process p and the time stamp of p1 is less than the time stamp of p2 therefore p1 happen before p2 second condition an event a happens before b if and only if two events a and b are occurring on two different nodes or processes where an event a is the sending event of the message m and an event b is the received event of the same message m and the time stamp of a is less than the time stamp of b for example an event q2 is a sent message event on the node q and an event p3 is a received message event on the node p and the time stamp of q2 is less than the time stamp of p3 therefore q2 happen before p3 transitive relation or transitivity is another condition for happen before relationship however it is based on the second condition an event a happens before c if and only if a happen before b and b happen before c for example if an event p4 happen before q3 and q3 happen before r3 therefore p4 happen before r3 
and remember the time stamp of P4 is less than the time stamp of R3. So the happen before relationship can be applied transitively. In other words, we can create a chain of events where one event happened before another. The happen before relationship is useful in determining a partial ordering of events in logical clocks. Now let's look at when we cannot establish happen before relationship between events, meaning that events are concurrent. So if two events A and B are occurring on two different nodes or processes in isolation, means they don't exchange messages, then it is possible that neither A happened before B nor B happened before A. In that case, A and B are said to be concurrent events. For example, P1 and Q1 events are occurring on the two different nodes in isolation and neither they exchange a message nor satisfy any happened before conditions. Thus, P1 and Q1 are concurrent events. Note. Concurrent events are not necessarily happening at the same time. It simply means that nothing can be said about when the event happened or which event happened first. Let's talk about causality in physics first. So causality is the principle that nothing can happen without being caused. Causality refers to the relationship between cause and effect meaning that one event contributes to the production of another event and it is normally tracked using physical time. Here, the first event is called the cause and the second event is called the effect. Now, let's look at causality in distributed systems where a global physical clock and physical time cannot be used to establish causality. So, we use logical time and happen before relationship to establish causality. The logical time is sufficient to capture the fundamental monotonicity property associated with causality in distributed systems. If A happened before B, then A might have caused B. Therefore, happened before relationship is often called causality or causal relationship in distributed systems. However, the happened before relationship indicates only potential causal relationship, tracking whether an event indeed is a cause of another event requires a further dependency analysis. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.